We are going to start. We are going to start our summer session with taking a tour of the central features of your Chromebook. When you log into your Chromebook, there are three features shown. This is the desktop. So the desktop is shown. The shelf. That's this toolbar right down here. It's called the shelf. And then the browser. That's your browser right here. The shelf is the bar at the bottom of the screen. It has Chrome right here and quick access to your Google Docs, as well as a search button. When you click the search button, you can quickly get to Docs. You can get to the Mel Library, Quizlet, a lot of things that you have recently visited will show up here, but you can also search for things, devices, apps, different websites quickly from this spot as well. So that's another option. When you click this button, you can expand it, and obviously you'll see that you can see more tools as well as help here. So kind of a neat feature. So we're gonna close that. There is also, when you are looking, the desktop, that's this part with the blue screen here. And the desktop has, right now when you look, it's blue, but you can actually change your desktop. So this will boot up when and display what screen that you wanna have. It's called wallpaper. And you want to make sure that you choose a wallpaper image that is school appropriate. So you wouldn't want to get in trouble for choosing something that isn't appropriate for school. The system tray is located in the bottom right hand corner. So whichever like photo ID that you pick to identify you, your profile picture. So that's right here. OK, so this is this is called a system tray and it's located in the bottom right corner. It displays the time, Wi-Fi strength, battery life and your profile image, which you can also change to a school appropriate image or take a selfie of yourself. So as you can look here, you can see that it has right, the keyboard, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, stuff that you've recently, like for me, I'm using something, so that's up, volume. Okay, you have your settings button here if you need help or have questions, and then shutting down. This is the quick reference to the date and then telling me how much battery life I have left. 63%, which is about three hours and 15 minutes. So really nice long battery life. But again, it's very important that you're charging your Chromebook every night when you start back at school. You're going to click on the tray to view more features like online connections. So when you go right here and you're looking at your tray, you can actually click on more features, uh, online connection, volume, help, sign out, keyboard, Bluetooth, again, those features. But there's also something that's really important when you go under settings. So when you click under settings and you scroll down, I'm just gonna close these uh, things out right now just because these are some other things I've been working on. But under settings, when you scroll, you can get to something that's called accessibility. So that, that's gonna be something that I'm gonna talk about a little bit because this will help people. Like if there's any students out there who maybe struggle or reading can be difficult or maybe even just like the size of the text on the screen, maybe you use glasses for seeing up close, those type of features, you wanna to go to advanced right down here. And then when you scroll down further through advanced, you're gonna see it'll say accessibility features, so right here, and then manage accessibility features. So when you look here, you can actually enable text to speech. So there's a program called Chrome Box, and it will read different websites to you and read things to you. This is great. Even if you're not a struggling reader, this is something that if you come across something that might be challenging or difficult, or sometimes you just don't feel like looking at the screen and you just want to listen to an article or listen to something being read. You can also enable select to speak where you hold the search button and click and drag and that content will be read aloud. You can use high contrast. You can do magnifier. Okay, a lot of different really great features for accessibility are here. A lot of people too with accessibility will do the on-screen keyboard, but I found that many students that bothers them. So this is the way to turn it off. You have to go here if it ever is on and you need to turn it off. But if you want it on, this is another way. Like if you flip your Chromebook over and you're using it more like a iPad style, like a touch device, this is where you might want to enable your on-screen keyboard. You can also make some changes to your mouse and touchpad and audio. So again, this is a really great spot to do those things at. This symbol right here, right up in the corner, this symbol is called the hamburger. 
And if you look, it kind of looks like two buns of a hamburger and then maybe the meat patty in the middle. This will always take you to your settings. So when you see a button like this, this is going to take you to all of your settings and get you to your settings. So we're going to close out now. And our Chrome browser, that's this right here. It looks to me like a beach ball. If, you're, if you've ever played the game, there's also a game called Simon Says. It kind of looks a little bit like that as well. But it more so looks like a beach ball. So this is going to be the spot where you do most of your work. This is, this is why you have a Chromebook to access Google Chrome. So you can't really use your Chromebook as a tool as much without the internet. So it's very important that you have Wi-Fi or you're working at a place that has the internet. So when I click on, I have my internet open and I wanna show you that there's this symbol right here. See the three circles? This symbol is called the snowman and the snowman does basic stuff like shows me my bookmark, shows me how to zoom in and out, Maybe I wanted to make my screen larger. Maybe I wanted to print what was on my page. Okay, this is the, the one that is going to show you maybe websites that you've recently visited. Open a new tab, new window. So that's called the snowman. Now there is another symbol too that's known as the Google waffle. And you'll probably use this symbol a lot more. This is the symbol that I use the most. This has all of my Google apps on it. And it's called the Google waffle. And you click on this and you can access all of your Google tools. Mine look different than yours because I have a different account. But you'll have some of the things that you use a lot and you can actually drag them and put them in an order that works for you. But if you look here, I think Calendar is a really great tool. And you want to get used to using Calendar because this could actually take the place of your planner. So now you can start using a digital planner. For me, you can see I have a lot. It links to my phone, so this is just more personal, but it has people's birthdays, important dates. So as a little challenge for you, I'd like you to go in calendar and add three important dates to your Google calendar. I think that will be really great for you. And if you look on your own account, you're going to see your actual Google Classroom page. It will start linking to Google Classroom. So feel free to use the first day of school as one of your three dates or um, something related to summer enrichment, some of our due dates. Another really neat app in the waffle, so when you scroll down, is Google Keep. Google Keep is a really cool app because it allows you to make lists. So you get a chance to make a list, almost like a post-it note. So you would hit create notes like this, and then you would start doing like a bullet note, and you can make a list of things. Maybe you're going on a trip and you want to list all the things to remember to take on your trip, or you need your shopping list for going back to school. Or maybe you have a big project coming up or a lot of things going on in a class and you want to give yourself a little to-do list. This is a great spot. So it's Google Keep. Also, if you just want to take notes in a class, this is another really great tool to use. So it's called Google Keep. I use it all the time. It's on my phone and I really like it. It lets me quickly share lists with other people. All right. At the top here, this is called a right here. You can bookmark a page. When you bookmark a page, your top pages will come right here. And you can put the pages you go to the most often. I would do that. Like if I'm using Google Classroom all the time, I'm going to have that at my top. If I'm getting on Achieve 3000, I'm going to have that right at the top. Whatever you use a lot, you want to start customizing your Chromebook and making it really fit for what you use. All right, my next feature I'm going to really go over, though, is the keyboard. And so to get to the keyboard, I'm going to load an image that I just downloaded. Okay, so first, actually, before I get to the keyboard, I want to talk about the trackpad. So you guys aren't using a mouse right now. On the Chromebook, you're actually using what's called a trackpad. So when you when I'm moving with just one finger and I click one time, that's clicking to select something. But when I use two fingers, I can actually scroll up and down or I can zoom in. So right now, zoom in, zoom out. I'm using two fingers. If I do a two finger tap one time, that's clicking. If I do two fingers back and forth, I'm swiping, like get this out of here, like I'm swiping back and forth. So two fingers go back and forth, that's swiping. So why don't you play around with using these tools at this point in the video? I think that would be really helpful. Now the keyboard is the next part. I can't actually show you the keyboard, so I found a picture of it. I thought this would be a cool way to go over the keys. It is similar in the ways that it has QWERTY, Q -W -E -R -T -Y, as 
the same setup as far as the letters and where they're located. But this row of keys is very different than what you would have on a desktop computer. And we call these in Chrome world, the Chromebook hotkeys. So I wanna kind of go over these Chromebook hotkeys and what they mean so that you understand them a little better. All right, so our first key is escape. I mean, I think you should probably feel pretty familiar with that, getting out of something, delete, like ending that window, exiting a website, those kind of things. That's what escape is for. When you look here to this arrow, this is to go to the previous page. So let's say I was on a website and then I got to another website, but I wanna go back to that website. It's almost like a back button. So it's gonna take you to the previous page. It's also similar to F1 on an actual computer. So to go to the next page right here, that will take you to the next page. So I wanna to go to the next page. Okay, I went back. Now I wanna go forward to the next page I was just at. This one will reload the page. Let's say it's having an issue. You're on GeoGuessr and it's not loading up or you're visiting uh, Google Earth and something's going wrong. This would reload your page for you. This is gonna make the window as large as possible. So sometimes when you're exploring on the website, your window isn't as large. This is gonna maximize your window. This button right here is called a switcher key and this will switch to your next window. This decreases the brightness. So let's say you're working at night and it's just too bright or you're working somewhere with already great lighting and you wanna dim your screen or you don't wanna keep someone awake when you're studying at night. This would actually decrease the screen brightness. This is going to increase the screen brightness. So this, this button right here. Another thing too, I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit more. I just realized I should probably zoom in while I'm doing this. So this decreases, this increases. Then when we get to this button, this is muting. So quickly, when you are like listening to me, you like are listening to music and your headphones get unplugged for some reason, quickly just hit this button. This will mute your music or whatever you might be doing with sound or audio. This is going to decrease the volume. This is going to increase the volume. And this is your power button, okay? It's gonna power you on and off. But on your Chromebook, this is actually a lock button. So it's different. Yours, yours is a tad bit different because your power button is on the side over here. So this is just the only key that isn't exactly the same. All the rest of your keys are pretty common. All right, so if you notice, caps lock is missing. So how do I caps lock? You could actually do alt Okay, so using Alt and then the search key, and those those will actually help you with being able to caps lock. So Alt with the search key, which this is the search key. So if you press those two buttons, that is the same as a caps lock. If you want to go to home, you can hit Control, Alt, and the up arrow. So I would come over here and do it because they're closer. Control, Alt, and the up arrow. If you want to end something, control alt and the down arrow. If you want to page up, alt and the up arrow. If you want to go to the bottom of a web page, alt and the down arrow. If you want to search on a page and look for something, that's control and then the letter F. Okay, so just to kind of help you out and teach you a few things, this, this is definitely something I think that will help. If you wanna get the on-screen keyboard right away and get some help with the on-screen keyboard and it will actually tell you all of the keyboard shortcuts, you hit Control, Alt, and then question mark. So Control, Alt, and question mark and look at that. It's gonna tell me all of my really cool shortcuts and things I can do. So again, remember that was Control, Alt, question mark and that's gonna give you a little bit of an on-screen keyboard and some shortcuts. If you wanna take a picture of something on your screen, like I'm doing some work on my screen, I want someone to see how hard I'm working, I'm gonna use control switcher key. So control switcher key. And switcher key, remember, was this key right here. So I'm gonna press control with this key at the same time to take a picture of my screen. Allows you to capture the area that you just want. So when you just want just a certain area, it's actually control shift switcher key okay so if you want to split your screen this is pretty cool you can actually do alt in the bracket so um alt in the open bracket button so i'm going to hit alt in my open bracket which is right here and you see how my screen is on one side 
And let's say I want to put this one. I'm going to put this one on another side. So and bracket. And I can move it back and forth. Isn't that cool? So pretty neat. I know a lot of times I like to, when I'm doing research, split my screen and have one article on one side and the questions on the other or where I'm taking my notes at. All right. So I think that we really did a good job of figuring that out and playing around with getting more familiar with our Chromebook. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of the work that you guys are doing. I just want to give you one little tip too. In Google Classroom, when you guys are finishing your work, you need to click a button that says turn in. That's very important. So again, I enjoyed this and thanks a lot. I really appreciate uh, all the work that you guys are doing.